What were, do you think, the three biggest revelations that were revealed? I think the biggest uh, revelation by far is the evidence that there is a clandestine and illegal operation uh, that has hidden and taken, stolen from humanity the solutions to the biggest problems we're facing. And I think these uh, you know, five whistleblowers who come forward uh, are given evidence of their little involvement, what they saw. But I think the bigger picture is uh, the fact that these technologies are real and it means that we can have, as this extraterrestrial said to Colonel Corso when he had a meeting back in the 50s at White Sands, and the ET, the, 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 the colonel said, when the ET said, will you help us with this, you know, with, you know, and, and the, the colonel said, what's in it for me? Very brusque, and he admits he was a sort of arrogant, brusque Air Force colonel. And the extraterrestrial said, a new world if you can take it. Mm. So I think that's the biggest part of this, is that on the one hand, there's a very disturbing covert group that's not being overseen properly by the government and which is illegal and unconstitutional. But the good news is, if we can correct that problem and bring these technologies out, it will be a new world, if we can take it. So that was said in 1956. Now, how long ago was that? 67, 67 years yeah, ago. Yeah. So two thirds of a century later, I think we need to take it. I think the other important part of this, uh, which I think is very key, is the testimony and information about the physics of uh, the so-called scalar and neutrino light systems, which uh, we have had people there at the uh, South Pole Raytheon station. Those systems are both tracking in deep space, but are also weapon systems. And there is a huge problem with those sort of technologies being used by rogue elements, not being um, okayed by the international community or even the Pentagon and White House and, and Congress. So those, are, those sorts of technologies need to be put on a short leash very, very quickly. Because that puts now us in danger, right? Or you say otherwise ETs are not a threat to us. Oh, they're not a threat, but you know, you, there's a universal right to self-defense. And I tell people when they all, you know, this obsession, of course, is more the human narcissism. I say, if you want to know where the threat in the universe is, go to a mirror and look at it. Hmm. It's what humans are doing. It's not what, the, what these civilizations are doing. By the way, these civilizations are so advanced technologically, but also socially and spiritually that they're very, very peaceful. And why? If you were, had the consciousness of what humans have now, where we fight over the Ukraine and every scrap of land and aiming nuclear missiles at each other, now take that mindset, but now instead of nuclear weapons and missiles, put in you know, faster than the speed of light technologies. Those civilizations would extinguish themselves right. in a nanosecond. So I think part of this, we need some scientific literacy so we get out of this sort of mythology of the war of the worlds nonsense. Uh, but on the other hand, I think that uh, we're at risk for uh, these civilizations at a certain point having this road, very rogue group, illegal, run through a red line. I call it the extraterrestrial red line. How far can we go doing this sort of reckless, dangerous behavior before they have to clip the wings of those folks? Now, the danger and the reason they're not doing it is that if, if the extraterrestrial civilizations did it, it would be portrayed by the lame media and the, and the spin doctors in these covert programs as an alien invasion, right. when in reality it isn't. In fact, even the, the witnesses we had come out in 2001, a couple of them were at nuclear facilities where ET craft went in and disabled some, and they felt that the ETs were protecting us from ourselves. But then there were charlatans in the media and the UFO community that took that same testimony and raided our witnesses and spun it into Alien Invasion Week on the History Channel. So here's the problem. These um, civilizations are very smart. They don't want to have to intervene. They want humans to fix the problem because this is our planet. So what I, my exhortation to our leaders and to the public is, we need to fix this problem before it gets any further out of control. And it's been out of control for over 60 years.
I think one of the most interesting revelations about, uh, that's coming out is the extent to which we have uh, these top secret whistleblowers, of which at the conference we only had about half of 1%, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And imagine that if there's a proper investigation or our civilian RICO lawsuit, and all these can be put under oath and it comes out, uh, imagine the impact that will have. Uh, I very much hope that the, the Congress, and I know many members of Congress and staffers watched, uh, if not in present uh, remotely, because it was streamed, as you know, uh, that they will then you know, pick up the ball from here. Because look, I mean, we're a private civilian organization. We have no governmental authority. Uh, I can provide evidence and we can provide perspective and advice. Uh, that's the best I can do. I don't have any legal authority at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, other than a, just like you or me, I'm just a regular guy, a civilian. Enough evidence has been presented there for them to take the ball and run. And I think the other one that's sort of shocking for people is, is this uh, witness, Marine, who, who saw that these technologies were being used in, in man-made anti-gravity devices involved in clandestine and illegal operations, and he was threatened, threatened with being executed. And so this is a theme that also triggers a RICO action, and that is the intimidation and extra legal or illegal killing of people or threatening of people. Uh, so I think that is also one of the big headline uh, events because I think that, that tells the public this is serious business and it needs a serious response from the authorities, including law enforcement. Are you overall optimistic about that we will solve our own issues? Well, I think one way or another, it will be. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, the only question is, is it going to go, are we going to allow ourselves to just get run further into the ground uh, and, and perhaps have a geophysical or environmental catastrophe? Or do we have the wisdom and the courage to do the right thing now and do an intervention? And I think, frankly, we're not, I don't think we have another 100 years to fritter away. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we have 20. So I think that it's very important that everyone, I always joke, anyone between the ages of puberty and senility, you know, get involved with this and, and take the action to write their uh, elected representatives and also anyone listening who is uh, himself or herself a whistleblower or witness to these events or know someone, they should contact us. And so what we wanna do is, the few people that are coming forward publicly now, we want that to become, that trickle needs to become a torrent. Yeah. We need to have thousands of people who are whistleblowers coming out publicly, with or without the U.S. Congress and, and the White House acting, because this is massive public action, and it's, it's the foundation of our democracy and freedom, is that people have freedom of speech. One of the things we pointed out, I think is a big headline, is that since these projects are illegal, those people who have signed non-disclosure agreements are not bound by them. Mm. Because you know, if, 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 if I'm a mafia guy and you have a contract with me, but the operation I'm running is criminal, you can, I cannot enforce that contract. So all of these people who have been in these government and corporate programs, including the ones at Lockheed and Northrop and elsewhere, they're unbound absolutely not at all by any security restrictions or uh, non-disclosure agreements. And this is a point we made during the Clinton years, that the underlying projects are criminal, and therefore, while they have signed these documents, they have no enforceability under law. And the other huge headline from this is we now have over 40 attorneys right, that are ready to represent the whistleblowers and also launch a RICO action against the individuals and corporations that are culpable. What would you say to the, because you mentioned the kind of puberty generation, <laughs> what would you say to the kind of the, the TikTok generation that are out mm -hmm. there and, and the, honestly the power that they have with uh, influence, with awareness, yeah. making a topic so big, what would you say to them? Well, we need their help. I'll tell you very bluntly because um, our group is a unfunded uh, public interest group that has no funding. The, what we can do is get this information to those sorts of uh, 
folks and ask them to put out clips of the video of it, put out links to what we're doing, links to the lost century and how to retrieve it. Because that generation, you know, these are my children and grandchildren's generation, uh, are exactly the people who, if we don't get this right, are going to in inherit a, a terribly difficult situation on this planet. And so almost all of those uh, younger folks are very concerned about the environment mm. and poverty and justice. Well, there can be no justice if we are deliberately keeping the technologies away from the, the world that would eliminate poverty and, and inequality around the world. There can be no environmental future if we don't bring out something better than a solar panel. So I hope that this message resonates with people of all generations, but I'm glad you mentioned this, the folks on TikTok and social media, and which of course I have no social media skills whatsoever. Um, I'm better with a ventilator or you know a chest tube or something. But, <laughs> but I think that, <laughs> yeah. but there are people who are very good at that. We yeah. need a lot of people who are big influencers. But you're really good at resonating with those people, right? Like the mm -hmm. Demi Lovatos of the world, mm -hmm. uh, yes, you know, the right. Miley Cyruses of the world, who will mm -hmm. resonate. They see there is some truth in it, and yeah. they want it mm -hmm. to get out there. They're they curious, they at do. least, right? And we need that help. Yeah. Actually, I would encourage more people like uh, Demi Lovato and others who are interested in this. Um, to uh, drop links for us, put the word out, uh, because really we, we simply don't have the funding that, you know, usually a, a, even a feature film like this would have millions of oh, dollars yeah. in, in marketing. We have nothing. So it, we have to rely on the word of mouth and the good graces of people who understand what we're trying to achieve uh, and, and to do, do the right thing and help us. So, yeah, I do want to make that appeal for everyone's help. Yeah. You know. Dr. Greer, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Yeah, You're I great. appreciate it. Appreciate really it. great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.